Hello, this is Doug Nelson, and thank you very much for your interest in precision neuromuscular therapy for the spine and thorax. This is a little anatomy review of some of the muscles and structures that we'll be covering in the seminar, and this will help you to be better prepared. We will spend a fair amount of time uh, analyzing the composition of the discs, looking at the nucleus, the annulus fibers, and really going in depth in that anatomy so that you have a functional perspective of why disc pathologies happen and, and what could be done to prevent them. We will also spend a lot of time on Friday night and also on Saturday morning studying and uh, working with the SI joint. This is looking at the SI joint, the joint between the ileum and the sacrum from the front, and then this picture is looking at the SI joint from the back and its ligamentous anatomy. The SI joint is part of our spine and thorax seminar and also part of the lower extremity seminar because it really belongs in both domains. The SI joint is neither part of the uh, upper body or the lower body. It is the very center of balance in the body. It belongs in both fields. Muscularly, we will look at the erector spinae and its iliocostalis and also longissimus sections. And we will differentiate and individuate each of these fibers so each of these tendon attachments to separate ribs will be examined. So you might want to review that anatomy again, the longissimus section and the iliocostalis section. Another section of the erector spinae that is less well known is the lumborum pars lumborum section, which is really made um, known by Nikolai Bogduk. So here is the iliocostalis and then there is also a longissimus pars lumborum section. Next, we will look at multifidi and, and its role, especially in stabilization in the low back. The multifidi at this section, for instance, right at what's called the sacral sulcus, is over an inch thick, and that isn't um, oftentimes well known. We don't think of multifidi as being that big and that strong but it plays a very important role in the stability of individual segments of the lumbar vertebra. From the front, we will look at the rectus abdominis and its role in also helping to create both movement and also spinal stability. Also in the front, we will look at the psoas and its role in hip flexion and also how it affects the low back and almost more importantly the iliacus and its role both in hip flexion but also its role in moving the ileum. The quadratus lumborum is a very very important muscle both for stability, for movement and also its role in affecting the disc and there are three fiber directions and these three fiber directions are uh, illustrated by the arrows. There is an iliovertebral section, an iliocostal section, and a costovertebral section. The serratus posterior inferior is obliquely angled superior onto the last four ribs. Also about stability in the low back, but um, also can create ipsilateral rotational movements, and this is something that we'll explore. Speaking of rotational movements, again creating stability in the back. You see that theme over and over again. We have the rotatories. This is the rotatory brevis, and this is the rotatory longus, and I think you'll really enjoy the section on spinal rotation and the things that both produce it and limit spinal rotation. The rotatories play a much larger role in limiting spinal rotation than they do in producing spinal rotation. 
A major rotator of the spine are the obliques. This is the external oblique, and this is the internal oblique. The external oblique is a contralateral rotator. The internal oblique is an ipsilateral rotator. The serratus posterior inferior that you saw a couple slides ago is also an ipsilateral rotator. So we'll spend a fair amount of time differentiating the things that are ipsilateral and the things that are contralateral rotators. This is actually a section that is confusing for a lot of people, so any time you can spend preparing for that will really help you in the seminar because the essence is this. A contralateral rotator produces contralateral rotation, but it restricts ipsilateral rotation. <coughs> so, for instance, this is the left external oblique, which wants to turn the body to the right. Therefore, it will restrict rotation to the left, to the same side. The serratus posterior superior lies under ribs 2, 3, 4, and 5, generally, and it, its attachments are actually under the scapula here. So it attaches onto the ribs and under the scapula. It is playing more of a role in respiratory problems and lack of movement in those ribs. So its role here is primarily a respiratory role, not a rotational role. Another respiratory muscle that we will deal with is the levator castorum, and that are these uh, little muscles right here. So here's the levator castorum longus, and this is the levator castorum brevis, levator castorum longus, brevis, longus, and then there's a little brevis under here. The levator castorum muscles primarily rotate the ribs during inspiration. Of course, also in the uh, respiration section of the seminar is uh, treatment of the diaphragm. And here is a picture of the diaphragm like a big parachute. In the front, of course, connected to the lower edges of the ribs. In the back, connected to the spine and is almost continuous then with the psoas. I hope that this little um, review of the anatomy helps. Again, if you don't have time to, to really look at this in depth, don't worry about it. We spend a lot of time with it in the seminar. But any prep time you have will really make your experience even deeper and richer. Thank you very much.